Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Health to Hold webinar series hosted by Ocean Mammoth Health Alliance and highlighting the work of all of our coalition partners. Um, today, we have Cancer Support Community helping us to highlight Cancer Prevention Month in February, and Erin McAllister is going to talk with us about all the programs and services that they offer. So um, we're happy to have you, and thanks for being with us. Erin, I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay, good morning. Thank you all for being here. Um, it is Cancer Prevention Month, Fe February, and we work with cancer patients and their families. So typically people are already diagnosed once they come to us. So I just wanted to say that, but we certainly participate in all of the screenings and the different community events that are offered um, so that if people through those screenings are diagnosed, they know that they have a support community to come to. Um, so I have a few slides and mainly a great video. And the video um, is a little bit long. It's like about 10 minutes, so, but it's well worth it. It's our members, you know, sharing their stories, three of our members. And I figured that was a good way to talk about our program versus listening to me ramble for, you know, the same amount of time. So um, bear with me for a couple slides as I share my screen and then we will watch the video together. Um, I wanted to say first and foremost, you know, we are located in Linwood, which is Atlanta County. And originally we served, um, obviously anybody that would come to us physically in Linwood. So if they were fine with driving an hour, that was fine with us too. Um, but since COVID, we've developed a really big virtual program. So that helps people to participate no matter how far they are in New Jersey. Um, we are looking currently for partnerships with cancer centers and hospital systems in Ocean and Monmouth County because we don't have any representation there and we would love to be there. So please keep that in mind as you listen to the presentation. If it is, you know, an opportunity for us to partner, we have contracts with a few cancer centers already down here in Atlanta County with Atlanta Care in Egg Harbor Township and then within Spira, which is in Mullica Hill and in Vineland. We also have a hospital partnership all the way up in Teaneck, which is almost to New York, um, with Holy Name Medical Center. So we would love to explore opportunities with your organization if you work with cancer patients. And, you know, we could talk about what a contract looks like and basically what services we would come and provide on site. Um, so please keep that in mind, you know, as we go through this. Uh, let me see. Okay, can everyone see the presentation, the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, great. Um, make it bigger. Okay, here we are. Oh, I already went back. Okay. Okay, so Cancer Support Community New Jersey. Basically what we do, we offer a comprehensive program of social and emotional support for individuals and families affected by cancer. So it's not just patients, it's the whole family and it's the whole time from right when they're diagnosed all the way through survivorship. The family is, you know, includes the children as well and even teens. Um, we work with several schools and we have the programming, you know, both in person and virtual for kids and teens. We offer different support and networking groups. Um, for patients and for caregivers. And basically the support groups are weekly and really provide like intense emotional support. All of the groups are facilitated by licensed mental health professionals. So they're not peer led or volunteer led. They are um, licensed social workers, licensed professional counselors who week to week show up and are it's the same facilitator all the time. So it really you know provides a lot of momentum for the group because the facilitator week to week knows what's going on with people and can welcome new members as well. The networking groups are more monthly. They can be topic-based or cancer-specific. So there might be a breast cancer group, a prostate cancer group, or it could be a topic group, like you know, um, a support group for parents who are living with cancer who have small children, or a couples group, something like that. Um, the healthy lifestyle workshops are things like yoga, Reiki, art therapy, all the things that we know, you know, give patients and family members an outlet, a place to go and learn new things, sometimes a place to just go and forget about the cancer. Um, other times, you know, a workshop that helps them uh, develop coping mechanisms 
but you know, get them through this challenging time. Educational lectures. We have a series called Frankly Speaking About Cancer. And there are about 30 different topics, everything from, again, specific cancer, such as frankly speaking about breast reconstruction or frankly speaking about clinical trials. Um, so there's all these different topics and it's a beautiful medically reviewed PowerPoint presentation that comes with a template for press releases and flyers and an evaluation form. So it's kind of this in the box um, presentation that a doctor, nurse, social worker, nutritionist, a different healthcare provider can tweak, you know, any way that they want. They can add things, take out things, but they don't have to create a presentation which is really nice because we can partner with you to offer like a lunch and learn where people come, they you know share a meal together, and then this is the presentation that they hear from that healthcare professional. Um, so it's really nice and we do those in all different you know types of um, situations with cancer centers, hospitals, it can be a senior center, it can be a YMCA, um, they can be held anywhere. Then we also provide social activities, potlucks, book clubs, um, you know, family get togethers, because a lot of times when a family is affected by cancer, their social network changes. You know, sometimes the people that they think are going to be right by their sides aren't. Sometimes other people kind of come out of the woodwork and really kind of carry them through. Um, so when they are feeling a little isolated or feeling like they just don't belong, you know, for lack of a better word, with their old social group, Sometimes coming here and being around other people and other families who understand that it really does change your life just feels good. You know, it just feels better. Um, an example about like the yoga workshop, we had a woman come who was, she did yoga three times a week at a yoga studio. But when she lost her hair, she came here because she said, I just didn't feel comfortable. I didn't want to wear a wig because it was too hot. When I went with a scarf, everyone was looking at me. She's like, but when I come to yoga at CSC, nobody even blinks an eye. Like I can just be myself. And so just that belonging, that sense of they don't have to feel embarrassed or worried about what other people are thinking. Um, and kids support. Kids support is our children's program where it's age appropriate education and support for kids who mostly have a parent with cancer or a parent who's passed from cancer, but it is also open to kids with cancer. We just don't see many of them because of where we're located. We're in Linwood and the closest children's hospitals where they're treated are DuPont and CHOP, which isn't very close to us. Um, but of course they're welcome and we have had several, but we tend to have more of kids who have a parent or a relative with cancer or who has passed. So again, it's cancer support for the whole family the whole time they're going through it. Our mission is to uplift and strengthen people impacted by cancer by providing support, fostering compassionate communities, and breaking down barriers to care. We're part of an international affiliate network that was formerly, which may make sense to a lot of you now, the Wellness Communities or Gildas Clubs. So we started as a Gildas Club 22 years ago. I started right with, you know, when the first day we opened. Um, so I've been here that long and we have really grown. Um, obviously, we have merged with the wellness community and become cancer support community, but we've also expanded to be the only affiliate in New Jersey. So as I said, we're looking to expand through hospital partnerships and cancer center partnerships to be able to reach more people. And until we're in your backyard, we've got that great virtual programming that people can be referred to. Um, Let's see, I already talked about in the beginning about our locations. Um, so, you know, we want to add that list. We want to be like 20 bullets long the next time that I come on here. Um, and obviously we are nonprofit. So we're a very small staff. Um, and the way that works is typically like I'll start the partnership and be on site and build those relationships and then hire a program manager who then works on site and is trained and supervised by us to implement the program. Okay, so the video that you're going to see are three of our members. They're going to share their stories, and I think it'll really give you a great idea about the program and how meaningful it can be to your patients and families as well. Um, I had um, pneumonia, and um, it wouldn't go away, and 
I went back, I was on a couple rounds of medication and the, my doctor suggested I get a chest x-ray and my chest x-ray came back a little funky. And so never in a million years, I just thought I had really bad pneumonia. So they said, let's send you for a, I can't remember if I had the biopsy first or the PET scan, I can't recall how that goes, but I had both of those done. And um, I was at Penn Medicine with um, a couple of my children and they, the oncologist come in and said, um, you do have lung cancer. And of course I was shocked, but he said, and of course one of my children said, what kind of lung cancer? And they said, he said, stage four. Well, as you can well imagine, all of us were just, you know, blown away. Um, I immediately went into, shutdown mode. That's all I had to hear. I had lost my husband previously, so um, I didn't want to deal with one more thing in my life. So I did. I I, I had myself um, done. I was done. Nobody lives with stage four lung cancer. So it was devastating. My children thought it would be a good idea because they could not really relate to what I was going through. Um, so uh, there was a virtual group, which I joined. And um, I've been on ever since. It's been a couple of years. Joining the Zoom group has um, has given me hope and strength and courage and um, the encouragement that it's real. Everyone's so real and they're going through the same thing. And um, that old strength in numbers is so true because I get so much strength. I've, I've shared more with, with my group than I have shared with anyone, um, even my children. Um, sometimes you don't you don't want to put that on your kids you know they my kids have dealt with enough in the past three years so um, everybody on my zoom can relate to what I'm going through and we all encourage each other whether like I said we're crying our eyes out because we had a really bad day or I went out and had a great day and you share that with uh, getting my treatment I know is number one my number two thing is is my group because that's as important as getting my treatment. My that's my that's my mental and spiritual treatment. Where your state of mind is works hand in hand with it. Because I just know for my past three years, I had two and a half years of um, really bad depression. You know, I was always sad, and um, this past probably a little more than six months, I think I've come, I've turned a corner where. I know where this and, and this helps everything out that's going, going on. So I try to stay in a good head and a support group keeps you in a good head. Um, you really need that. Um, your, like I said, your mental health is so important to your whole well-being. Um, and that's what I've gotten from my support group. Three years later, here I am. I never in a million years, in a million years, did I think I would be sitting here doing something like this, which is kind of, you know, a little nerve wracking for me, but um, I hope that someone hears this and says, I can do that too, because you can, you can with the support, with the right support. My name is Thomas and I, um, I'm a prostate cancer survivor of three years. My baby sister died from cancer in July, my baby sister. You know, my father died from cancer, you know what I'm saying? So now my baby sister died. So I say we all get checked. I'm the oldest, the only thing they find wrong with me is a hernia. I had the hernia pushed in in October, but the pain is insane. And um, in January, I go to the hospital and they tell me that I have cancer. And I'm like, impossible. I've had the, um, the thing down my throat, the thing up my butt, you know, but nobody found it. You, you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I end up in the hospital. Um, None of the doctors would tell me. Like all these doctors are coming in all day. Finally, the, the, the doctor that did the surgery came in and said, Tom, they think you got cancer, and so do I. And, and I, I don't know what to do, you know? So I'm walking by here, and I'm walking by here, and I'm walking by here, and I'm reading the flyer upstairs, and I'm walking by here. Finally, one day, I, I just walked in. I found the courage to, to walk in, and, and like I told them who I was, and, and, and I told them what I go through, and, and they go through the same stuff. It's, it's not male or female. 
It's 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 the feelings that we go through. It's 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 not being able to sleep at night, not because you're worrying about paying your cell phone bill. You know what I'm saying? Because you might not wake the hell up. Without the group, I'd be lost. Uh, I, I truly would. I would have no one to talk to, understand. That it's, it's a hard ride. You, you know what I'm saying? So scheduling my medicine around the group um, um, gets me here. I know that I found some place where I feel like I fit in. But I need this to, to, to make it through to the next week. You, you know what I'm saying? It gets me up. It gets me dressed. It, get, it, it gets me wanting to feel good about myself. You know? My name's Erin. I am 47 years old. I am originally from Sutton, Massachusetts. I live down here now. Um, I am a social worker in the community. I assist individuals that are experiencing homelessness or at risk of homelessness. Um, I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer um, last May. Um, it was actually like the Thursday before Memorial Day. Um, but Initially, when I thought, oh my gosh, I just got diagnosed, I'm 46 years old, I was literally like, I'm gonna lose my hair. <laughs> like, and I have a lot of hair. <laughs> um, it's fun up there, but you'd be surprised with how much is hidden up in that bun. Um, I'm gonna lose my hair, and then it's like, oh my God, I'm gonna get fat from chemo. So not only am I gonna be like 46, but I'm gonna be bald and fat. And I'm like, I can't even, like, that was like my first yeah, thought, but I, it was just like superficial fears. You know what I mean? Like. And then being an, in, like, I'm a very independent person. And then the idea of like, oh my God, I have to like rely on other people to take care of me. Or like, I have to ask people for help was like a lot, um, like in my overall like scheme of things. Um, but that day when I got diagnosed, I was at my office, I was working, you know, it was like, I'm still in the middle of my work day and I got the call and it was like, I have to go. And I just like left. And I finally was at that point where I was through everything and I realized like I had a great support network, but what I didn't have was somebody that had been through it. So I came to Women's Night. Um, that was my first group I came to. It was a Wednesday. And I came in, I didn't remember like the build up, like I'd signed up and then like the build up to come, like even coming here, I was like upset and emotional because it was like, I'm joining the community. I'm finally like admitting in a part of it. And it's like putting it out there in a way. It's and It's been like something where like I can go to and it's just like people that understand this side of my life. Like it's not like about like me being the social worker or me being any other part. It's just like this part of my life that I have people that understand and support me just based on that like this is something i'm going through and you get it. you know we talk about non you know like not just cancer you know we talk about other parts of our lives and it's great because it's just nice to have other people to talk to that understand how cancer impacts other parts of our lives it's kind of nice to have other people in the same boat so my name is john daly pleasure to make your acquaintance um i'm 28 years old i'm diagnosed with stage four alveolar soft tissue sarcoma it's a rare cancer of the uh, connective tissue between like your muscles and bones and all that. Um, I was diagnosed with this about uh, three years ago. Um, I, uh, I have several tumors inside of my hip. Uh, I have a literal pain in my ass, under my ass. <laughs> and uh, several lesions inside of my lungs as well as a nodule about the size of my fist. Then I have these two on top of my head here. This big one and then this, 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 this pretty little doll. <laughs> I have a very like can-do attitude, real strong will kind of thing going for me. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's scary. You know, it's, it's you know, I, I, li I try and stay, I try and stay optimistic and positive, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's the fear of the unknown. You know, it's not knowing if you're going to, like, if it's going to, if, if this treatment's going to help, not knowing if, uh, you know, like, if the, if the, if the treatment will actually make you feel worse, like, like, go, going, going through this cancer journey, you know, it's scary. It's, it's a lot. It's hard. The group definitely brings different perspectives. They're going through the same thing that you're going through, like, they, they might have tips or tricks or uh, info that you normally wouldn't get from, you know, Google, Googling on, uh, you know, on your phone or like, or even asking your doctor sometimes, because your doctor will give you the, he'll give you the facts, right? But um, 
there's a there you know there's there's something to be had from a uh, actual lived experience that uh, you wouldn't get otherwise unless you went to a group. I'll, I'll admit it. I am a stubborn person. I don't like to ask for help, but honestly, I I'm working. I've been working on asking for more help because I need it. You know, um, it's it's rough. It's hard having cancer. You know, there's a there's a lot there's a lot of uh, pain. Not physically, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually. You know, you're not alone. I think that's the most important thing. You're not alone in this journey. You know, you go to the group, you have them. Th those people there, it's like it. it it's awesome. It's good. It's great. It, it, it feels like family almost. I can talk to I could talk to any of my family or friends about what I'm going through, but they'll never fully understand what I'm going through. They couldn't even relate to what I'm going through. There's a there's a kind of connection that you can't make anywhere else that you get from when you go to the group. And uh, I think that's very special. I think it's awesome. Whenever you share your story or when you hear others share their story, you know, you're, you're like, you, you glean little bits of, uh, little bits of wisdom from everyone. And, every, and just sharing your story, it's, it's very cathartic, you know, it's very, it's nice having someone to listen to, to listen to you. And then you could possibly be helping someone else out at the same time, you know? Like we, like when you're in the group, we all care and lo like love each other. We listen to each other, you know, it's, it's great. It's just really, it's really great place to go to. Uh, whenever I talk to people about my cancer journey and stuff, I hope that, you know, they'll be able to relate or find something, something from my, from my, what I have to say that'll help them to keep going or to at least have a better day than they were having earlier. So, you know, obviously it's tough to kind of hear some of that. And John, the last member that you heard, passed away three days after Christmas. And, you know, not every story ends in survivorship. And, you know, sometimes the group can be a place where people process being on hospice and being in pain and, you know, talking through the decisions that they have to make. And we were able to do that for John. And he had a loving group of people who supported him and still to this day, every Wednesday in his group, talk about him and remember him. Um, so it's, you know, the program is special. It is, it really kind of gets down to like the raw emotions and the, <clears throat> excuse me, um, some of the more difficult issues that are, you know, really personal when it comes down to trying to live with cancer, regardless of, you know, what the outcome is going to be. So, you know, I know that video is powerful and kind of speaks volumes as opposed to, you know, the PowerPoint and bullets. Um, but that's what we want to bring. You know, we want to expand those groups. And, you know, there are four members on that video, but there are 4,000, if not more, people in New Jersey that could be on that video sharing their story and talking about what they're going through. And so that they have access to a program and groups like this. Um, and again, you know, our goal is to obviously help people who can be on the virtual program or get to a physical site that we already have, but we want to expand and we want to do more than that. Um, we would love to be in Ocean in Monmouth County. We would love to have a hospital partnership or a cancer center. Um, I graduated with my MSW from Monmouth and I want to get back there. You know, to me, like I live in Ocean City and born and raised and back raising my family, but Monmouth County's, you know, special to me and we'd love to be up there. Um, so again, you know, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them, but if there's also an opportunity for us to partner or work more closely with your organization, I would also love to talk after this meeting about that as well. Thank you, Erin. Um, yes, the video was very powerful very powerful and several different stories with different outcomes, right? Um, but that's that's the way this works. And we have a lot of supportive partners as part of our coalition. So uh, many of them are here today. 
And I want to open up the floor to anybody that may have a question. Feel free to please put it into the chat box or um, it is a manageable group today. So if you have a question for Erin, please feel free to take yourself off mute and go ahead and ask. I know I have a couple, but I'll let the group go first. In-person groups. I can see in the message they're asking if we offer in-person groups. Yes, we offer in-person groups at all of the locations that were mentioned. So our main location in Linwood, which is right outside Atlantic City, um, in Spira, both in Mullica Hill and Vineland, Atlanticare in Ann Arbor Township, and then up in Holy Name um, Medical Center in Teaneck. So all of the locations offer in-person groups, workshops, educational lectures, social activities, in addition to the virtual piece. Marissa just says, thank you. And for reference, Marissa works for Community Medical Center, which is part of the RWJ Barnabas system um, in Tom's River, which, which is in Ocean County. So um, perhaps could connect you with somebody or the per correct department that might you know, help create some type of relationship there that you mentioned earlier, Erin? Yeah, absolutely. We're open to any type of partnership and outreach opportunities. Um, you know, doing outreach in other counties is important. And again, there's that virtual piece so that until we have something on site, they can participate right away. It's not like we're saying we have nothing for you until we're on site at a hospital in Monmouth County. They can participate virtually until then. That's great. Other questions? I saw Tracy, did you take yourself off mute? Did you have a question? All right, if no one else has a question, I'm gonna ask a, a couple of questions here. So in the very beginning of your presentation, Erin, you mentioned that you know, you typically see families once they have a diagnosis, but you know that screening is very important and part of the process um, with a lot of the work that we do in the community. So um, obviously we have very great partners in the SEED program and we do um, encourage screening for those who have no insurance or um, don't have full coverage insurance through our SEED. And um, we're just wondering if, the families that you work with now having gone through what they go through are bigger advocates for screenings that maybe they would be willing to, you know, share what SEED is offering and, you know, whether it's hand out flyers or a post on their social media, just that SEED is here in Monmouth and Ocean County and we should be able to help use them as a resource. Yeah, I mean, that's what we do down here. We, you know, refer to the SEED program often because, yeah, when people come in, it's one person with a diagnosis, but it could be three, four people in a family or just the spouse or an adult child who's saying, what can I do? You know, the, a lot of the adult children say, should I get genetic counseling? You know, what do I do? How do I figure this out? You know, is it hereditary? All these other questions come up for people. And so they're often, you know, not diagnosed, but looking for resources and looking for information. And we have an ability then to refer and to connect them with other community resources who do the screening, um, which is important. And, you know, some of the educational lectures, you know, are geared towards people who don't have cancer because it is information about screening. It is information about prevention. Um, and we bring in our partners, you know, to give those talks. So, you know, participating in community outreach, having a cable at a healthcare, you know, information event, those types of things are where we really network with those other um, organizations. And of course, like coalitions like this and alliance, you know, the different county, um, the different county coalitions. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the other question that I had was about another hospital partnership. So actually my, um, my community health worker came to us yesterday and said, um, what, what kind of support groups are being offered in Spanish these days? Like, how can I connect our Spanish speakers to the support that they may need? So I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about that here today and ask about what you guys might offer in Spanish, if anything. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, full transparency, nothing. We have in the past, and we had certain grants that provided us an opportunity to have a person go into Atlantic City um, in more of the Spanish-speaking communities, and we did some work, and it was great. But unfortunately, like most of you know, if you work for a nonprofit, when those grants come to an end, it's often hard to find that funding again. Um, not to be said that we wouldn't look for it again, but some of our bigger affiliates in bigger cities, of course, have incredible Spanish speaking programs. They almost have everything we offer in English and Spanish, not just the group, but the workshops, the lectures, all of it. Um, you know, as a resource, I would say that our headquarters, which if you went on to cancersupportcommunity.org, you can find an affiliate for someone, but you can also tap into their resources. And they have a huge library of Spanish materials. They may have virtual groups that kind of anyone can join because they have funding for the Spanish speaking populations. Um, so there are kind of bigger, you know, resources out there. But locally, we don't have that. We would love to partner with someone and be able to offer it, um, but we don't currently offer Spanish-speaking programs. Okay, let's talk afterwards because she, the reason she came to me was because she has the need from some of the families that she's been working with, but also one of our partners through a hospital system up here had just um, approached her and runs groups and but there's nothing that they're offering in Spanish either so we wondered if there was a way that we could kind of coordinate something and create something but you know we really didn't explore much further than just a preliminary conversation and so it's very timely that we're talking about this with you today so um let's talk offline if you're open to it that's great and Marissa's sharing with us that Cancer Care does have a Spanish speech speaking virtual support group. That's good. Um, yeah, so we're, I think what Angie was asking of me yesterday was um, something that's geared towards mental health. Um, Spanish, I mean, I'm sorry, not just Spanish and not just something around cancer diagnosis, but also um, mental health. So again, we should just explore because I, I, I didn't get the full story from her yesterday, um, but yeah. Marissa, thank you for sharing that about cancer care. And I think if I can mention one more thing, a lot of times when we, you know, it's great to have a full satellite program at a hospital. It's awesome, right? That's what we want to replicate and do well and kind of keep that quality control and have the program manager. However, that's not always the case. And sometimes an organization has a specific need. You know, they have to fulfill a ground or they want to, they see a need in the community and someone, you know, like this person comes to you, you know, keep us in mind for things like that too. We're happy to not just, you know, come up with resources, but maybe there is a certain group or a specific lecture or something that we can do that's kind of just a one-off mm -hmm. or, you know, we decide to do annually or something that brings more people to your organization. Like we're happy to partner in that way too. It doesn't have to be a full-fledged satellite. Got it. Okay, that's good to know too, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so, oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, if anyone um, wants to contact me after this, my email is my name, Erin, E-R-I-N, at C-S-C-N-J, which is Cancer Support Community, New Jersey, dot org. Excellent. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions for Erin? Okay. All right. So I'm going to give a couple of quick updates from the coalition and then we can um, conclude today's presentation. Uh, so we have this series running every month and the next time we're going to do it is on March 27th. It's a Wednesday from 10 to 11. Um, we will be highlighting colorectal cancer in March and Hackensack Meridian Health will be um, sharing their programs and services and talking to us a little bit about colorectal health. So that's that. And then um, one shift and change in our health equity response staff. We, um, as many of you know, uh, Ocean Mammoth Health Alliance took on a health equity response component and added it under coalition a few years ago. And Diana Rios was always the person in that position. And more recently, Diana has moved on to a different position and we have Kathy Zapsik. Um, filling in with us and doing that component of the grant. So thank you, Kathy. She's here with us. If you see Kathy's name, 
um, that's, that's who she is. And she'll, she'll be the person to reach out to if you want to do anything health equity related or any kind of COVID-19 needs. So a talk, a resource, any type of guidance, and um, Kathy would be our person. So I can put her information into the chat box for us just so you have it. And um, yeah, I think that concludes all that I have today. I'll give one last call for anybody who may have a question for Erin. All right. All right, everybody. Well, have a great day and I will talk to you all very soon. Erin, thanks so much again for giving insight and perspective about all that Cancer Support Community in New Jersey does.